Okay. So, very good morning to all of you. I uh, know, and this is interactive session for the your uh, power system engineering course. Uh, so, some of you have uh, your uh, have uh, put the questions uh, in that Google sheet. Uh, I have some uh, 14 or 15 questions with me, and uh, your uh, particularly before uh, taking those questions that uh, I think uh, this time uh, assignment uh, 7 probably uploaded and uh, those who have uh, uh, particularly in assignment 1, 2, assignment 3 you have done well as, as per uh, from the average marks whatever I have understood and assignment 4 that you are traveling away particularly uh, that thing uh, average is little less because of you know that this particular topic is slightly you know difficult than the other topic covered in this uh, course and uh, whatever questions you are putting that asks to be a question or in the forum all the questions have been answered till date right even uh, last uh, night i received one email from one uh, student regarding uh, your uh, that uh, our assignment 7 one problem but uh, that has been uh, that also will be clarified i think whatever question you have raised and whatever answers you have written it appears to me that it is correct i have also discussed with my ts but if anything is there you put in the forum regarding assignment it will be answered immediately so all the questions have been uh, your what you call answered so uh, so somebody has take some uh, uh, questions first for example somebody has written that brief review of your what you call the cables so if you look at that cable uh, coverage whatever i have made for this course everything more or less in detail as far as undergraduate study is concerned and uh, uh, and uh, I once again I was going through the notes of the your what you call that cables I found things are okay for undergraduate level so there is no need for further you know the brief description of cable everything is there everything is there and another 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 point is that your um, before uh, st taking another another somebody has somebody has said something uh, different that is selection of power system for further studies of people student will be favorable for their future uh, this is a you know this is the question that uh, i mean in general my feeling is that uh, if you uh, take power system course what will be the future or something like that so look without power we cannot move right so any any course you take power system related means definitely it will help you in future and uh, previous course the power system analysis previous semester and this semester the topics which have been left out I have taken for that and uh, that is why that power system engineering uh, your course it has covered uh, many things but one thing I have taken that before taking more questions that uh, distribution system because nowadays the con that the electrical engineering uh, right uh, so nowadays the concept is that uh, I can say from its axis it is slowly and slowly that is shifting because uh, uh, your uh, of microgrid nano grid smart grid so concepts are changing so that's why the distribution system earlier it was a passive distribution network that means that there was no source connected to the distribution side say if i consider in our country for example say 11 kb side but if you connect the, the distributed generation or dgs in short uh, it may be renewable it may be your uh, non renewable renewable we call that is your uh, non dispatchable and uh, your uh, what you call and any 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 your uh, non renewable we call dispatchable so this dg is when you connect to the distribution side network then uh, your uh, distribution network uh, are no longer passive it is active it is active distribution network and that's why i thought uh, that uh, distribution system particular distribution load flows and little bit of application of sun capacitor series capacitors and some approximation something has been made and particular distribution load flow so and it is for only only for radial distribution network uh, load flow algorithm has been explained currently those uh, assignment you are doing for distribution load flow and uh, only thing is that please follow the note carefully I have tried my best to uh, explain each and everything in detail and it is not available in the book at present 
but I thought one should learn this from the point of view of that active distribution network. So, it is a it is a it is a radial network concept is only radial network is considered and I have told that what is a radial distribution network and what is mesh distribution network. If you follow the your uh, that uh, lectures you will find everything has been explained in detail and the load flow plot I have simplified for you. That is if you when you are when somebody put question last night is send me a mail that means she has understood that what actually has been done. So, in that case we have tried to find out the number of nodes beyond each branch right. So, but the algorithm is there to find out the number of nodes beyond each branch, but your case what I have done it that I have asked you to make a data file for that that how many nodes are there beyond each branch because it is a radial distribution it is a radial network. So, automatically you can and take those uh, nodes as a data right that means you have to put when you write the code you have to your what you call you have to uh, give those data and read those data that how many nodes are there beyond each branch. So, that is why algorithm part for identification of node I have not covered because my objective was to let you know exactly what it is. So, that is why the distribution power flow at two methods are covered one is method 1 another is your what you call method 2. In fact, these two methods actually uh, this uh, two methods actually several years back uh, actually this concept came to my mind. So, in that case the first met method 1 or method 2 whatever has been made method 1 method 2 method 2 when you are computing voltage magnitude only that actually I, I did it several years back when that, that was 4 or so 93 I have I have made it that uh, that method that method I have developed and whether you will believe or not at present my age is nearly 56, 57, but also I used to write own. I have several computer programming control as well as this distribution system and you people are young people and uh, nowadays coding is one of the component for getting job, software job everything. So, code part I have not I have just given the algorithm, but code part I have not asked you that you develop because that, that then the objective of this course uh, co course will be lost, but I have given the complete algorithm that you please uh, see that and if you develop this load flow algorithm you will find that perhaps it will be very useful for you uh, for your what you call for your BTEC project if you do and so, suppose if you need data for this uh, some da da your distribution network because whatever has been explained there it is for balanced distribution network. Right, assuming that like transmission line that this can be represented by a single line diagram equivalent, right. So, that is why unbalanced part I have not considered for this course, then it will be slightly difficult for you. So, that is why unbalanced power flow I have not considered and there itself your what you call if we come if you come from the beginning that I think we started with insulators, uh, then cables and then your uh, the your what you call corona, then uh, traveling waves then sag and tension all these things have been covered. Somebody has put a question that your particularly that insulator case that puncture voltage and flash over voltage right. Actually in the case of puncture when arc actually passes through the body of the insulator then your what you call insulator will be totally damaged right. So, there is no chance of recovery and you have to replace that one right. And whereas a flash over flash over voltage actually due to some you know due to surges say if the flash over can occur between the your what you call conductor and the arc and around the your insulators because air is surrounding the insulator. So, there may be a flash over voltage, but a puncture voltage is much higher than your what you call the flash over, but uh, some but uh, uh, generally flash overs actually because of flash over that insulator may not be damaged generally in general, but some special cases may be there it may it may get uh, damaged it may your what you call may get damaged also. So, those insulator parts and if you look at the insulator that uh, different we call that raincoat or petticoat right. If you look at that, that top portion of that petticoat or raincoat is slightly bigger in uh, you know uh, than, than uh, your what you call than the other part right. Because it is say that will be shaded from the rain right. If flashover take place it will go at your what you call that flashover distance will be less and it will fly it will be there on that your upper petticoat of the this thing or the insulator. 
So, if you if you uh, if you see physically the insulator, I mean if it is in front of you, then you can visualize this. But if you see uh, your what you call suspension type of insulator or string insulator, then uh, nearby transmission line, high tension transmission line, you have seen the different uh, different combinations of insulators are there, right? Generally, you will find several strings are there. Each piece may be approximately uh, 11 kb uh, something like that. So, insulators have been covered in detail and everything, everything your what, what were questions you are putting in that your what you call that your uh, uh, forum, all the questions are answered. I have told my TS not a single question to be skipped. So, till date all the questions your all the questions have been answered right. If you have anything in your mind then another student uh, has put a question in that for your Google set that 50 hertz or 60 hertz frequency let me tell you this has become a convention over the years. So, 50 hertz generally in Asia uh, except Japan I will come to Japan later and uh, Europe they, they follow the standard 50 hertz and if it is a two point particularly in thermal power plant if it is a two pole your uh, generally it is a two pole uh, jet synchronous generator. So, naturally the wind turbine sorry that uh, your turbine generator speed is generally 3000 rpm, but in, in, in USA or Canada it is 60 hertz. So, it is 3600 rpm this is the difference of the speed that is all, but there is no other thing this system is convention is coming over the years. So, there is no I mean it depends on country to country, but in Japan they have both they have 50 hertz as well as 60 hertz system they have both and but operating voltage level in our country if you take it is 230 volt uh, line to your what you call the neutral voltage at your residence and where at present I am sitting here also. But if it is in USA, then it is uh, 110 volt say. So, but in that case, if it is 110 volt, that uh, appliances, for example, use at home, the rating and other thing will be different. Similarly, here we make 230 volt, so that will also uh, your design procedure will be different. This is the thing, but this convention is coming over the years. Somebody has put a question that why the voltage level is multiplication of 11 kV, right? So, this uh, this 11, 11, 11 kb right uh, your what you call that 11 then uh, 33 then 6 even 22 kb also I have seen. So, 33, 66 then 132 up to 220 these all are multiplication of 11 there is no reason as such right. I have tried my best about this one even this morning also I tried let me let me review let me brush up my memories once again and there is no reason such that, but after that it is 400 kV. So, there is no reason that, uh, but this standard or this convention is coming for over the years, but this is this is our country, but other country it is different. Some countries it may be instead of 11, 12.66 kV or maybe your what you call uh, high voltage level 345 kV, this kind of your what you voltage level is there. So, it is up to that, it is totally up to the your what you call, it depends uh, on the design point of view. But our country it is multiplication of 11 up to 200, 220 kV after that is 400 kV right. So, if you take uh, above 400 kV 765 kV lines are there in different part of the world as well as 1200 kV also right. So, there is no there is no such uh, your what you call reason. Another student they of course, it is on the previous uh, course, but still I have to answer that regarding power system analysis course he said load flow studies then optimal operation and jet bus building algorithm. Sir, uh, why do they give, I have given the algorithm, he said it is iterative method algorithm, but why not the coding you are teaching. Look, then objective of the course will be lost. Let me tell you all these things. I have all these codes, uh, all these codes I have, uh, even distribution load flow, I have so many algorithm, I have all these codes. But question is that, that then objective of the course will be lost. You may be able to write the your algorithm or this thing, but if I look uh, all over India and different colleges, right. So, I found that then uh, objective of the course will be lost, but algorithm everything I am give, giving if you want to if you want to write code then naturally you can naturally you can uh, your what you call that uh, uh, your uh, uh, what you call uh, then uh, uh, that uh, it will take then not 30 hours recording it may take 50 hours recording. So, somebody has put a question here I want to know about the relation between coronal loss and production of non sinusoidal wave. Actually just uh, just these things I have skipped beyond the scope, but let me tell you one thing because of the coronal loss the charging 
that your what you call that your charging current will be higher because coronal loss actually introduces your what you call harmonics. Because of that harmonics your what you call that uh, it uh, your what you call it uh, uh, your increase the charging current because of the harmonic. The first one who put the question and production of non sinusoidal arc that is true non sinusoidal wave that harmonics will be produced. So, the which is better 50 hours this is another question which is better 50 hours or 60 hours it depends on the it depends on various sky or you know you know country to country this convention is calling I cannot tell which is better yeah, it both are same it, it the only thing is that your design part of the turbo generator system will be different because for 60 hours that your it is two pole machine you know ns is equal to 120 into 8 by p and p is equal to 2 a p 60 hertz then it will move the turbo generator set will move at a speed of 3600 rpm right and if it is a 50 hertz then it is 3000 rpm for example in our country all thermal 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 power plant the turbo generator same road is totally on the design purpose there is no basis that i cannot tell which is better resisting i will say a totally design thing and uh, there is no merit on demerit over each other i have to say that both uh, whatever i have understood both are same so in our country or europe it is a 50 hertz then another one uh, sir will you please explain concept of the reactive power flows this is actually somebody is uh, writing that uh, uh, generally the uh, your what you call that if you studied circuit theory you will find the reactive power actually moves in a cyclic wave take uh, for example your this is beyond the scope the single phase uh, single phase uh, uh, circuit or three phase circuit whatever you go to the uh, that power flows in a circuit theory chapter there you will find the concept of reactive power, but as far as load flow is concerned and this thing let me tell you this is the thing. Uh, but anyway uh, this concept of reactive power flow uh, your uh, next semester I will, uh, will I will try to take another course there this will be explained direct uh, very nicely I will try my best, but this reactive power concept of reactive power flow means that your if you consider uh, while teaching load flow studies that uh, your uh, your uh, loads generally it is a mostly most of the loads are of lagging type right that means it's consume uh, real power as well but at the same time it consume reactive power so generally at the at the power station the synchronous generator say for example it generally it operates around 0.85 power factor so it generates real power but it generates reactive power also but when it's when it when it is uh, that power that current is flowing through the transmission line high tension line then it will be step down step down right finally to uh, it will come to consumer side right Ex excluding say industrial consumers i am talking about ourselves right so in that case what will happen that line actually both have r and x values so naturally you will have uh, i square r loss as well as i square x loss but generally you will find the whatever reactive power generated by synchronous generator right and whatever load required the reactive power sometimes load reactive power demand is much more than the reactive power generated by the synchronous generator. So, in that case what we do actually generally in general thing they say put fax devices to support the reactive power. I will tell you the simple thing if you go to the substation then you will find almost every substation you will find that sun capacitors are connected. Sun capacitors actually inject reactive power and that is why that power factor improvement may but may not be for this uh, 7 as uh, your uh, up to uh, 31 to 35 uh, that your lecture uh, videos, but it will come after that there you will find everything has been explained with mathematical everything is there right. So, in that case what will happen that sun capacitors are employed and connected particularly at the substation up to 33 kb substation level you will find that sun capacitors are connected and uh, basically uh, uh, then those sun capacitors actually are made it the main objective is uh, first thing is that it improves the power factor you know that. So, whenever you are connecting sun capacitor I have told that your when sun capacitor has come not up to 35 video lectures after that it will come, but I am telling you that whenever you primary objective or supplying reactive power using sun capacitor is that it is actually your um, primary objective is that it reduces the power loss right and though not much it improves the voltage magnitude right. 
but general general uh, common idea I have seen among the people that sun capacitor means it improves the voltage. It improves the voltage, but that is not the primary objective. Primary objective of sun capacitor is that it actually reduce the power losses, both real power loss as well as reactive power, reactive power loss, but our objective is the real power loss, right. And series capacitor actually its primary objective is that it improves the voltage magnitude and though not much, it is what you call it uh, reduces the power loss. So, details are there after the lecture all these things will come. So, as I told you the reactive power flows, the synchronous generator generate reactive power, but it is not sufficient to supply that, uh, that, uh, that reactive power to the load. So, that is why we put that your what you call sun uh, compensation devices such that, uh, that your what you call all uh, your uh, power factor also will improve and uh, automatically whatever shortcomings will be there that will be compensated by the your what you call reactive power. Now, another thing is uh, somebody has said thank you, thank you sir listening all this. Now, somebody has written uh, is uh, anyone uh, from there sir, somebody has said sir why does not use two phase system to it also create rotating magnetic field. Uh, actually, it is not economical. I do not know whether in your course it is taught or not. In the past, I have also studied single phase, two phase, three phase and the volume of the copper required everything. And so, actually it is not economical. You have to see three people are thinking of so I have seen some of the articles that from three phase to six phase, but whenever anything you choose first you have to think about the economy. It is not your interest from the monetary point of view because money is involved. So, you have those, those two phase system actually not economical, uh, maybe you have studied your this thing. Then uh, another question is there sir, uh, writing uh, matrix that E j j k for 30 bus load problem is difficult. So, how to tackle that situation? Actually, for if, if you have taken the 33 bus distribution network very commonly used by the people, but in the lecture note it is not there. Let me tell you uh, that data preparation is not at all easy in that 33 bus distribution network. Uh, bus 1 is a substation and you have uh, 3 or uh, 1 main feeder uh, lateral branch is there. If my memory is correct, then it is 1 to node 18 is the main feeder. After that some lateral branches are there. So, easily you can make a data table, it is just a, it is type uh, typing of the integer number right and read that, but identification algorithm is also there. If I explain that identification algorithm, you can easily write the code and for any system you can apply, but then objective of the course will be lost. I never wanted that you should uh, develop this identification algorithm, but it is there. But you put the you put that uh, that uh, beyond each branch you find out the node. For example, beyond branch 1 all the nodes are there for example, node 2 to 33. Similarly, beyond branch 3 how many nodes are there just prepare, prepare a your <coughs> what you call it is a data table and enter it. It is nothing actually and uh, after that you can find out that uh, that initial values of the voltages you compute initial value of the voltages uh, you sorry you assume and substation voltage you take one angle 0 say. So, all it will be flat voltage start flat voltage means that all the node voltage should be equal to the slack bus voltage because your substation is a slack bus voltage and 30 that that, that 33 kV actually original is it is a hypothetical system actually and uh, it was given long time back if I recall correctly this uh, this uh, network probably it is in 1991 around that time <coughs> somebody from USA in his pa paper we found it hypothetical uh, not uh, not a real system, but 69 bus another one is there it is a real system and its voltage level actually 12.66 kV. So, 1 per unit means it is 12.66 kV right and accordingly you uh, assume all the voltage initial voltage is 1 angle 0 every bus every every uh, your node your loads are known PL, QL, kilowatt, kilowatt. You take for example, whatever I have taught you, you take 100 MBA base and 12.66 your what you call that uh, uh, base voltage, but all the data are uh, you can convert accordingly to R and X value to per unit because base impedance is equal to KB square upon MBA, KB base square upon MBA base. So, divide all the R x value by base uh, your base impedance. So, you will get that power unit values and all the load if it is given in kilowatt suppose it is some some node it is there suppose probably if I recall correctly I think node 31 or 32 that your real for 33 bus system that real power is 200 kilowatt real power reactive power 600 kilowatt is given. 
So, all these things 200 kilowatt. So, divide both kilowatt and kilowatt by 1000, it will be megawatt, megabar. Then again, divide by 100, that is your base MBA, that will be per unit. That means, whatever kilowatt, kilowatt data is there, that you divide by 10 to the power 5. And so, 1000, that is the, it will convert to megawatt and 100 MBA base. So, 1000 into 100, so 10 to the power 5. So, you will get the per unit values. Then, similarly, in that, your what you call that you calculate the load current. In general, ILI is equal to PLI minus JQLI upon VI conjugate and why it is conjugate, I have explained in the load flow studies, previous power system analysis course, here again, right. So, all the initial load current you will know. So, all the load currents are known, beyond each branch you know all the nodes. So, add all these things, it is like a Karsov's first law, right. Algebraic sum of the current meeting at a node is uh, 0. So, it is something like a Karsov's law. So, find out each branch current and if you know the each branch current, then I have given no, uh, one table is given branch number, then sending a node, then receiving a node, M1 is equal to uh, JJ, J is the complex operator, that is why I have taken JJ as a branch number. So, M, uh, or what you call M1 is equal to sending node ISJJ, M2 is equal to receiving node IRJJ, you write V, then your, you write VM2 is equal to VM1. Uh, minor for JJ is equal to 1 to LN1 the LN that is branch number. So, you can write no VM2 is equal to VM1 minus JJJ into IJJ accordingly you can solve iteratively. So, just it is a just a small data preparation if you really do it 33 bar, but I did not tell you the identification algorithm, but those uh, papers distribution load flow whatever I have their algorithms are there for identification of nodes beyond each branch, but I did not or what you call I did not consider that right. That was, uh, so, just hold on. Then some more questions are there. In, in context of transmission capacity, two limits are mentioned, thermal capacity limit and static stability limit. My question is, what does term static uh, in stability limit uh, refer to, right? So, thermal, thermal actually thermal stability limits means that maximum rating of the your what you call uh, that your uh, current rating of the conductor. Every, every th that is called thermal rating. That means every conductor, just you cannot allow different type of conductors there for transmission line. Uh, if I name these, the names are mostly from the animals, right? It is lion, tigers, zebra, like that. And its diameter depends on that. And every conductor has a maximum current carrying capacity and maximum allowable temperature rise. That is actually star your what you call thermal limit. And you are another thing you are asking that is the static uh, your. Uh, so, I do I do not want to I do not uh, the static stability limit means what does it mean exactly I can but perhaps uh, perhaps you are uh, trying to tell that maximum your what you call allowable your what you call power capacity that is if you take a single machine two bus system say V1 V2 upon X sin delta if delta is equal to say, 9 degree that will be V1 V2 upon X if R is neglected right that is the maximum allowable your uh, what you call real power right. Perhaps you wanted to mean that is the your what you call that your uh, static limit, but my course my question is it is actually in reality it may not be it may not be possible. I do not know that um, or what you call whether you have done that experiment right your power angle or torque angle characteristic in machine lab in your in your institution when you do torque angle case laboratory case also if machine is running for a generating mode or say motoring mode you can find in laboratory you can go up to 11 or 12 degree not even uh, 13 14 15 also machine can lose synchronism in the laboratory reason is that this is a question to you that what is the reason right yesterday also here my students are doing that by your torque angle characteristic and uh, but in reality you cannot uh, go up to that your what you call that v1 v2 upon x sin delta if that, that is the theoretical one, but in reality it may not happen, but, uh, but that limit can be at least power carrying capacity can be increased by means of fax devices. For example, if you put series capacitors in a line, but all that lot of restrictions are there uh, to use series capacitor in a, uh, your in a transmission line, the resonance is the one part, uh, subsynchronous resonance and that also uh, that is beyond the scope. And uh, second thing is for distribution system, not perhaps not up to 30, I, I, I cannot recall whether uh, series capacitor is there up to 35th lecture or not, but after that I have told that your series capacitor. Now, another thing is that your what you call um, uh, that uh, uh, good morning sir, why do you take S is equal to V i conjugate? Uh, uh, I am telling from my mouth, not writing, just see that. S generally we take P plus J Q is equal to V i conjugate. 
actually uh, actually to why we conjugate it is to capture the power factor angle just try to understand for example uh, otherwise otherwise you cannot uh, for, for otherwise you cannot capture uh, the power factor angle for example suppose uh, something is given say v is equal to say 100 angle 30 degree volt suppose this is given right say i is equal to your 5 angle say minus 15 degree ampere it is given right so so question is suppose this is your reference point a uh, reference line say this is your reference line. and now so v is equal to 100 angle 30 degree so this is my v is equal to 100 volt and this is your 30 degree from the reference line it is leading and current is lagging minus 15 degree so i is equal to 5 ampere and this is your 15 degree so what is the power factor angle between voltage and current that is 30 degree plus 15 degree is equal to 45 degree so if you take your whatever you are putting the question here right now that s is equal to p plus jq right so basically what that is you are writing vi uh, conjugate if we take p minus jq it is v conjugate i load flow studies but uh, so in that case your v is equal to your 100 volt and angle is 30 degree and current is i conjugate so i is 5 minus 50 so i conjugate will be 5 angle 15 degree so it will be 500 angle 45 degree that means it will be 500 by root 2 that is cos 45 plus j 500 sin 45 by root 2 so p is equal to your p plus j q p is equal to 500 by root 2 watt right that is three approximately 350 watt and 500 by root 2 approximately 350 kilowatt that's why conjugate conjugate is to capture the power factor angle but in the load flow studies what we do we take p minus j q is equal to v conjugate i if you take i conjugate the mathematical formulation will be difficult that's why p minus j q v conjugate i that is your what you call that is uh, for the easy analysis so conjugate is to capture the power factor angle but one thing you have to add that at the time v and i it will be purely sinusoidal that thing should be in your mind from the technical as a technical person when v and i are purely sinusoidal then only this uh, p minus j q is equal to v conjugate i or whatever you putting v plus p plus j q is equal to v i conjugate right now let me tell let me see what you are writing uh, then uh, is there any transient dynamic limit to uh, look subtransient thing is there transient thing is there steady state is there uh, that is that comes uh, that whatever you are telling uh, that comes actually one tough course is there for PG score student that is uh, your power system dynamics and control. Uh, since last semester since last year I taught this course for some time but here it is beyond the scope for this thing but yes whatever 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 you are telling those things for synchronous machines those things are considered then another thing DC insulator near the conductor is uh, why the insulator DC is uh, string insulator near the conductor is highly stressed because uh, the stress string uh, your what you call wherever whenever uh, we have explained that if you look at the your construction of the tower you will find that electric stays or uh, this thing uh, because uh, conductor to your what you call that uh, that gradient right those uh, conductor to the each piece of the your insulator string uh, which will be very close to that your conductor it will be highly stressed but which are away the distance is increasing so naturally the stress will be less so naturally you will find at the bottom most one as the lowest one and conduct the insulator which is very close to that it is a higher one right for the your what you call particularly this is for your say, suspension type insulator then uh, another thing somebody is writing whether it is practical to install the series compensation by reactor inside of the ferroresistance group a series compensation uh, as you are telling uh, by uh, reactor series reactor in spite of ferroresonance effect no it is it, it is uh, if you use series uh, uh, inductor then uh, that effective reactance of the line will increase it will not decrease right because in the case of capacitor it will be x minus x c and in the case of inductor it will be your x plus your what you call xl right or uh, though in that in that case 
that reactants will increase. Therefore, what will happen that instead of voltage uh, drop decreases, voltage drop will increase because impedance will increase because it will be R plus J X plus your XL. So, that is not recommended, but, uh, but sand reactor when suppose, uh, but sand reactor not series sand like sand capacitor, sand reactor can be used uh, during light load condition because during light load condition that sometimes that your voltage uh, receiving end voltage is your uh, what you call that greater than your uh, sending end voltage there is a Ferranti effect we have last previous uh, course we have seen. So, if it is uh, in that case sand reactor will be useful to bring down that voltage, but series reactor not recommended. Uh, then uh, hold on uh, who is writing uh, this thing whether it is Acha. Uh, thank you sir, uh, slag bus, uh, this is uh, how to uh, find fault point if there is fault in underground leaklessness. Uh, this thing I have personal equipment is there, uh, that is good uh, find out fault uh, uh, this underground cable location one. We have a special uh, your uh, equipment and from that uh, as we try to locate the uh, nearby region and accordingly fault is detected, but how it is detected that is the beyond the scope, but uh, here uh, our campus is completely underground cable, if fault happens they follow such things that a fault can be detected, just you can see here and there that nearby locations can be detected. And uh, second thing is that uh, somebody said just hold on slag bus in the distribution uh, transmission uh, this thing that uh, I do not know what will be the question. It may be, it may be that uh, how to choose slag bus or whatever it is. Uh, previous uh, course uh, slag bus, PV bus, PQ bus everything has been taught even P and PQV bus also which are the new concept came that if PQ bus is, PQV bus is there, P bus has to be there and uh, slag bus one the concepts are changing. In distribution system that slag bus basically we take the substation voltage and the substation itself is a we, that uh, your secondary side of the transformer side we take that bus is a slag bus right. And uh, somebody put a question sir slag bus that your bus bar I have seen like a, a comp, uh, your uh, rotor coil your conductor or square thing actually it is that all the leads or the terminals connected there basically we call it is a bus bar basically it is a node it is a node right, but arrangement is made like that at the substation or at the power station. So, slag bus for the distribution system case it is your substation we consider that substation secondary site and uh, in distribution system generally PV buses are not there all buses are PQ type buses, but nowadays because of distributed generations many researchers are also considering some of the buses are PV bus in distribution system. And let me tell you one thing, it is not the not uh, in your course, uh, you have not covered that, but particularly for the microgrid case when it is islanded microgrid, when any, anything in network is connected to the grid, then voltage and frequency will be dictated by the grid, right. Uh, but as soon as things are isolated, for example, for example, your own college, you want to supply power from a separate source which is not connected to the grid, at that time two important things are required you have to control the voltage, you have to control the frequency both, right. So, in that case what will happen for islanded microgrid case, there is no uh, your uh, no question of your uh, what you call that uh, uh, that uh, what I will say that uh, it is slag bus free, because you have correcting and in that case your uh, Jacobian matrix whatever you form everything is fine, but there itself it is a slag bus free this is one thing. Second thing is how to make it that is beyond the scope. And second thing is that frequency, uh, if we assume that frequency is not constant, then frequency part also come in the Jacobian matrix, theories and other things slightly it will be slightly difficult for you that is why not interested to cover. But uh, some other, other somebody is putting how to find fault watcher. Then another thing is sir overhead line we use 70 this thing disc insulator, but in substation we use 120. Uh, uh, this thing uh, disk insulator. This is uh, this about this question. I was not aware of it, right? That um, overhead line and this thing. It of course this insulator thing. It depends on the your what you call. It depends on the cross section of the conductor, uh, particularly the overhead transmission line, because the tension has to sustain, right? So and uh, this question about this one, 
but in substation we use 120 kilo in disk insulator. I, I, I have, I'm not aware of this uh, of this particular thing, right? As you have put it, definitely I will see once that. But this this one I can tell this 70 or 90 it depends on the it depends on the tension of the conductor and the distance height of the tower as well as the distance between the tower, right? And another thing is. Uh, uh, Oh, it is not, it is, it is actually Karshoff's law, right. Some people pronounce it as Kirchhoff, but it, one, one professor from, uh, one professor actually told me that exact pronunciation will be Karshoff, right. That is the correct pronunciation, some one, when I was a student, one professor told me because he studied in England and he told me that exact pronunciation should be Karshoff, right. So, K I R C H double O double F, right. So, it is not your Karsops, so it is Karsaks, it is Karsops. That is you call Kirchhoff law, Karsops first law, second law, that is the thing. And then sir, I was indicating long transmission line while line capacitance is more than, uh, line capacitance is more than reactance. Uh, listen, for long transmission line, series 1 will be only resistance and reactance and shunt, shunt 1 will be capacitance, that is the charging capacitance, right. Uh, in the series there will be no capacitance, no capacitive reactance. In the series it is your what you call it is line resistance and reactance and if you put series inductor then naturally inductance will increase or and capacitance actually line to ground right charging capacitance. So, it is uh, and in the in that case if you want to put sun capacitors are there I tell you at every substation you will find sun capacitors are there, but series but uh, reactor uh, that if you want to use reactor some places. Uh, long time back I see uh, one 220 kV substation, uh, I have seen that reactor was there, shunt reactor was there, but uh, no use of your series reactor, uh, uh, your, uh, your, uh, your uh, yeah, impedance will increase because reactance will increase. So, that is the thing and uh, so, so another, another things are indicating that, that I told you that this is the thing and another, another point is here somebody had put uh, that. Uh, Mm, how to how to be a good at power system in each and every section? Uh, this is up to you. How much you study? How many good books you are following? Right. So this is a this is a your what you call. This is up to you. Right. Then uh, then let me see what is where anything is here. Uh, here. Uh, uh, what are the important core concept in this subject? Somebody had put this question. Right. So, important core concept in this subject is look uh, generally your uh, insulator cables then corona then second tension then all like or your what you call that transient over voltages everything has been covered right. In addition to that core concept is that distribution load flow and they are according and in addition to that that approximation method and your series, uh, your what you call sun compensation, series, series compensation and everything, ha everything has been covered such that uh, with the current train you will have a good idea. In addition to that, uh, I have covered in detail that that will come later that is your uh, load frequency control, right. So, this also, also has been covered in detail and also I have given flavor of that load frequency control or automatic generation control in a in a your what you call in a uh, in a uh, you know brief sense such that you can understand. But uh, when this topic will come let me tell you one thing I do not know whether you can uh, visualize from here or not. Generally when you will study uh, somebody is writing load frequency control somebody is writing say automatic generation control slight difference is there. Uh, for that if you want you read that book of professor P. S. Kundur, not professor, he's a, he's a, he was a very old now, he is an engineer at Ontario Hydro in Canada. So, P. S. Kundur book, right, power system, I think title is power system dynamic stability. So, uh, somebody has co questioned transients uh, limit or something, those things are also available in that book. So, generally that automatic generation control is equal to load frequency control plus economic load dispatch. Right. If economic load dispatch you are not considering, then automatic generation control is equal to load frequency control. Right. This is a simple way I am trying to tell you. So, uh, th those economic load dispatch actually has been covered in that your previous power system analysis course. Now, actually what happened that uh, just try to visualize, suppose suddenly at this moment 
say power system load has increased to 100 megawatt right and suppose you have 5 for only consider as a thermal generator. Suppose you have 5 thermal generating units assume that all the generating unit have the spinning reserve right. Spinning reserve also explained I think in the previous course this time also brief uh, description is uh, explanation is there in unit commitment right uh, later it will come that means every generator is capable of supplying power. So now suppose if it is 100 megawatt and every generator has the fuel cost characteristic which has been covered in your optimal operation of power system in the previous power system analysis course right different generator has different fuel characteristic. Now, if I say 20 20 megawatt to 5 units then it not, may not be your, your, your economical it may not be economical right as far as fuel cost is concerned. So, that 100 megawatt power you share among the 5 units uh, in such a fashion such that your fuel cost will be uh, uh, minimum right. Accordingly the signal will go to this 5 generating units and those generating units will generate power accordingly. For example, one unit may be 33 megawatt, another unit may generate say 13 megawatt like this, but total is 100 right. That means economic load dispatch is coming and after that signal will be received by your what you call uh, that each generating unit and accordingly power they will generate such that fuel cost will be minimum. Another thing is although not taught in that your what you call in that course it will be little bit heavy for you that uh, for the load frequency control part that uh, your generally that two outputs are measured one is that your frequency deviation another is that uh, if, the, if the interconnected system then the power deviation that is flowing that is two, two suppose two interconnected system connected by tie line means it is a three phase transmission line actually and the power deviation these two are measured right and accordingly your what you call a signal is formed and that that actually controls the frequency and the power flow deviation. So, in that case that uh, suppose uh, suppose in a particular power plant you have 3 or 4 generating units and we assume that all the generators they swing in unison in a particular power plant that means they are in coherent group that means they are increase or decrease speed we are assuming it is same such that mathematical modeling will be easier. So, those details for load frequency control and your what you call uh, everything is uh, considered in this course, but regarding uh, let me tell you regarding unit commitment I found that it will be too heavy for you for undergraduate level that is why unit commitment part I have finished in only the brief uh, thing and I have told you only dynamic programming method how to uh, how to solve it, but and very uh, if you take larger step length how to make this uh, evaluation and and and, and that is all and constant and other things not considered I found it will be too heavy for you. So, so basically for unit commitment you will give I have just given the flavor later I realize that it will be a little bit heavier for you, but uh, automatic generation control or the distribution now till from from this distribution side to till automatic generation control your load frequency control you will find things will be very interesting for you and you will see that how uh, how we have made it and if you have any queries anything you can send me the mail and uh, this thing just hold on several other uh, question uh, this uh, <laughs> nowadays we talk about wireless power yes research is going on all over the world regarding this wireless power right and uh, uh, this is actually you, right now uh, you cannot supply that your what you call industry or running uh, your uh, your locomotive train uh, electric engine uh, that wireless power, but uh, research has uh, started I have also seen couple you know papers coming up research paper coming up on wireless power and uh, hope uh, uh, hope uh, that in near future at present you are young perhaps when you will come to my age at that time something will be definitely developed because technology or science is moving fast right. At that time I may not be I will not be uh, your on this earth I will vanish into the blue, but at that time when you will come to the my come to my age definitely you will see that wireless power is coming up, but whatever I have seen here and there that laboratory stage they have made uh, something right few hundred say few meters away that light will be on switch through wireless only. <coughs> so, in sorry in that case the design of your light fan AC everything everything has to be changed, but hopefully one day it will come that like your mobile tower 
your uh, that tower will be there and power will come into your residence that may will happen definitely will happen in future that people are thinking about and people are all over the world they are doing research on that regarding wireless power right so uh, but at present it that situation hasn't come that we can teach in the class at present but i have seen the articles are coming up but they are not only electrical engineering that uh, electronic side or communication side engineers are also required only electrical whatever you are studying it is not sufficient for that and uh, like your uh, the way we receive your mobile <coughs> your what you call mobile tower you have and you receive the signal same way hopefully it will hopefully it will come in near future near future means exact we also do not know maybe after 30 years 40 years 50 years but technology is moving very fast same example for electric vehicles that is battery driven vehicles right uh, and that also is coming very fast but if you one night if you change all the vehicles to battery you know, electric all the petrol or diesel engine to electric vehicles you cannot because if you, are, you have to charge the electric vehicles so power then uh, those uh, those electric vehicles have the batteries and charging when you charge all the electric vehicles together say thousands or lakhs of that power station don't have that much of power to generate if you charge everything at the same time but many play, many countries battery charging station is come uh, are there and vehicle electric vehicle charge but fast charging technique is required if you charge at a battery charging station those things are coming up and these are for the your future thing in in, in uh, our country or this thing at least uh, we call that <coughs> three wheeler auto we call toto those are battery driven right so so many totos are there uh, in kharagpur also maybe more than 300 totos are there right those are battery battery driven so it is good for it is a green power and good for your what you call for the your environment and another somebody has said um, sir is it uh, is it wise to follow admission matrix in place of negative sequence or what matrix or zero sequence or zero sequence voltage uh, directional earth fault right look uh, as you are telling this course is uh, not related to that negative sequence or what matrix or zero, those who are doing research uh, they follow certain different thing but as far as classroom is concerned uh, the, this is uh, not required, but um, particularly for false studies of a thing uh, that your what you call positive, negative or zero sequence, uh, they have uh, some different technique even uh, I know something somebody has done something interesting uh, for unbalanced system also fault, but that is beyond the scope. So, um, uh, I mean it depends on you if you can find out something new whatever existing is okay. If you try to find out something new, it is okay, but uh, but you, whether it is wise or not, I cannot tell you because I do not do research on the false studies. My research actually totally limited to your distribution system and nowadays to microgrid and distributed generation renewable sources, etc. Right? And uh, sir, why uh, um, uh, sir why uh, to uh, why to have separate signal and pa power and uh, this thing? actually uh, just now i told that frequency actually what they do that they combine these two signals right when when load frequency topic will be covered you will see uh, that one characteristic there we call frequency response characteristic so in generally what happen that in a in a power system uh, that if uh, load demand changes for example uh, that uh, because throughout the day just try to listen throughout the day that power is uh, changing continuously both real power and reactive power but as long as they are changing in a small magnitude right right say delta delta suppose if real power demand is pl say changing in the form of delta pl small continuous changing is there because switch on switch off is there so if small real power changes in that case what happen it affects the your what you call that the uh, vol your frequency that means voltage angle hence the frequency right and it leaves the burst voltage magnitude unaffected. So, in that case what happen that uh, uh, whenever some small disturbance come in power system that generator actually it cannot generate power immediately uh, to supply that load because look this is a basically a physical system like we all human being also we have some physical constraint if I ask you to run 100 meter 
in uh, your 10 second you cannot make you everybody cannot be Winston Bolt right 9 point I think I don't know the world record maybe 9.58 or 5 seven, 7 second if I ask you to uh, but one day this record also will be broken right so if I ask you to run 100 meter in 9 second you cannot do that because physical constant similarly machine also has physical constant so that suppose somewhere load demand has increased 10 megawatt and generator immediately cannot generate that 10 megawatt it has some physical constant it cannot generate right so in that case what will happen as soon as uh, that suppose when load the power demand has increased so what happened that initially what happened that turbine and generator is a huge mass right and it is rotating at a synchronous speed and because of this the frequency will slightly decrease Be, but it will never lose synchronism it will never lose synchronism and machine will never go out of step so in that case there will be sudden loss or there will be sudden loss of kinetic energy right but machine is in synchronism it is but slightly deviated from the synchronous speed but synchronism is not lost right because this this your what you call loss of kinetic energy where it will go little bit it will be in the form of friction windage or your thermal loss etc and and very although it is very very small but that energy actually will be converted into power and it will be going to the grid for that you read only i elgard's book is that electric energy system it is by mcgrohill right i think tata mcgrohill right and, and the footnote this reason is given in the load frequency control that is why I think OI Elgard book I have given in the reference book you read that. But after that what happened because suppose there is no controller generator cannot bring the power to the 10 megawatt then what will happen as the frequency deviates from it suppose it is a 50 hertz system say before the disturbance it was operating at 50 hertz now because of this the frequency will go down and it will attain a steady state value say 49.9 hertz. So, so what will happen you will find after when it attains the steady state you will find generation has matched the load right but it is at the departure of the system frequency. So, system frequency is never at 50 hertz it will be operating at 49.9 hertz right. So, that the cost of departure of frequency that system is operating without any control mechanism. Now, if you if you if you the and this comes actually you you see the load frequency chapter your uh, when it will be uploaded later you see the frequency response characteristic right there everything is explained and that is why two signals are taken there is a there is a uh, term called frequency response characteristic beta right that has been defined in load frequency control chapter. So, if B then we call some frequency bias as I said two signals you said one is frequency another is power deviation in general we, for, we form this signal as area control error because also deviation is a frequency error a tile in power is also a deviation is a power error we combine these two do we call area control error that is we call B into delta F plus delta P tai right. So, that B actually is a frequency bias constant. Now, if B is equal to beta the area frequency response characteristic I am telling now because it will you will not get the recorded version, but in video lecture I have shouted several times just listen once again that B is equal to beta where that beta actually the uh, your area frequency response characteristic. In general for a single system if I recall the formula that your beta then area frequency response characteristic if load disturbance is delta P L then beta is equal to minus delta P L upon your D plus 1 upon R right when lecture will be there you just see that. So, in that case what will happen that for any system recommended value that frequency bias B should be is equal to beta in that case what happen actually if two power system are interconnected or more does not matter suppose 1, 2, 3 this kind of thing uh, this kind of thing I hope many teachers also will be there they also will be listening right. <coughs> so, if two power system is there suppose this is area 1 this is area 2 the two power system are there suppose load disturbance has happened here suppose <coughs> it was initially P L <coughs> now it has changed to P L plus delta P L right. So, this load change is there and this is your G area 1 G so there may be many generators here right and I am just putting G 1 G 2. So, in that case what will happen it is expected that this generators in this area area 1 it must accommodate its own load 
assuming that it has sufficient spinning reserve to accommodate its own load. Otherwise, it has to this load, uh, it has to borrow power from this area. Here also load is there, here also load is there, right. So, in that case, what will happen that if we keep B is equal to beta, the frequency area response characteristic, then this particular only at steady state you will see this generator will uh, accommodate its own load and this load disturbance delta P L will be completely unobservable by this uh, generator to area right. Only during transient you will find some changes in generation, but at steady state when you look into that it will be completely unobservable by this disturbance will be completely unobservable by this generator right. This and this is your tie line, this is your tie line, what you call that tie line, this is your tie line right. And but uh, as if your beat that is your one thing the load frequency control you see when b is equal to beta. When b greater than beta in that case what will happen it will not be completely unobservable. In that case we will find a steady state this one also has to generate some power <coughs> this one also had to generate some power depends on the b 1 b 2 value or beta 1 b 2 value of this thing right. If b greater than beta that means the load disturbance here will not be completely unobservable. So, that is actually not desirable b greater than beta and if it is b less than beta another phenomena will happen in that case that co op this whenever two areas are connected means it is basically cooperative assistance between your between the your transfer two areas right. So, at that time you will find if it is this then if even if suppose this area it needs power from this you will find this tie line power help will be completely withdrawn before anything happens you will find it will move to your what you call to its come back to its original value without uh, your uh, helping this right. So, this is also not desirable best one is this one is desirable and another thing is B greater than beta is also possible right, but this less than beta is uh, is not at all uh, is not, it is not against the your it is go against the standard practice it is not at all right. So, that is why your what you call that load frequency control chapter it has that is why two signals are used and both will be controlled such that if controller is there then at steady state you will find when generation and loads are matched at steady state you will find both frequency deviation will become 0, frequency deviation 0 means frequency will come back to its nominal value and your what you call tie power deviation also will come back to its 0 that means tie, tie line power flow also will come back to its schedule value <coughs> that is why whatever the two signals are required. Let me see uh, actually uh, somebody, somebody has said that the grading of cables actually you have to see the electrical trace that any 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 string which is very co close to the your uh, your what you call to that your uh, that conductor right it is uh, it is given in your uh, in my uh, cable thing it is very i mean if uh, any string is very close to that your what you call that uh, con your conductor when we are measuring measuring v1 v2 v3 right we are moving away from the conductor at that time you will find that which is very close to that that uh, the string which is very close to the conductor that is electrical trace across it is higher when when it is coming to the bottom it will be less because you are moving away from the conductor and in that insulator part that why it is more or less I think I have made everything uh, your what you call every explanation and another another one just see uh, sir please explain grading of cable another thing neutral wire is used to complete the circuit but when you touch an open wire we do not get electric uh, electric shock. Open wire open wire means I do not know which side you are talking of right uh, whereas the new in uh, the residence we give your what you call that uh, your uh, this thing that one phase and two neutral right and I do not know that uh, when we touch an open wire we do not get electric so open wire means what you want to mean I do not know that uh, this thing, but uh, uh, but in our in our house I have uh, got electric shock right and many many others also because of this. I do not know if it is a live wire then definitely you will get uh, electric shock if, if you are if you are in bare feet and other and uh, otherwise uh, if it is a shoe is acting as your uh, this thing insulator. So, you may not get shock uh, then sir nowadays wireless power why uh, to have separate signal that I told you and grading of cables 
uh, there is again he said sir please explain that again I told you just you see some Yasir uh, Bhika he has put this question I see that insulator thing again that everything has been explained there that at the bottom the trace is less and at that your uh, nearby your uh, conductor the trace is more and any any anything is coming just let me see whether I have uh, missed or not and uh, uh, the nothing and uh, let me uh, this thing uh, any uh, anything I have missed or not uh, uh, just uh, uh, any 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 more questions if you have you can put right and uh, uh, and uh, uh, any other thing if I if you ask me to tell then I have to tell you that in the distribution system uh, uh, at no load and heavily loading and line loadability uh, it is uh, it is explained uncompensated it is again your uh, not related to this power system engineering course but let me tell you uncompensated transmission line at no load and heavily load heavily loading and uh, line loadability. Uh, first thing is that uh, line loadability in general is that before it is uh, your what you call uh, lost the voltage stability part right and uh, distribution system uh, voltage stability has been covered in this power system engineering course and there your line loadability also has been explained particular distance uh, thing is uh, this thing as long as you know uh, line loadability case means uh, suppose uh, of course, it depends. Uh, see it, sometimes it, it is a. Uh, I mean, uh, when it goes for voltage collapse, it is a slow phenomena. Slowly and slowly it goes down. But in general case, suppose uh, suppose in general, suppose in general, uh, suppose load is increasing. You assume the load is increasing for the theoretical or academic interest. You assume this way. Say just one minute. Let me have a little bit of water. Right. Mm -hmm. Suppose you are increasing the load, so in that case the voltage will voltage magnitude will go down, and slowly and slowly the voltage will decrease, and in all the nodes it will decrease. But you will find one particular node that decreases much more than the other node, right? If you if it is uniformly increased, so at certain point you will find that it will collapse. That means theoretically when there will be no solution, there will be no solution. Right of that uh, your power flow solution say, right? So it will it will collapse, and before that uh, point, but exact collapse point, it is just now uh, your what you call just and uh, just like that you increase the load. Not if you want more accurate result, some technique is there, right? To find out the exact uh, value and exact collapse point. And second thing is that your uh, your uh, that uncompensated line. And your sir, please explain uncompensated transmission line at no load. Uh, uh, uncompensated transmission line, if li line is at no load, say high tension transmission line. So generally, it what happens that Ferranti effect comes, right? Generally, you will find that your receiving end voltage will be greater than your sending end voltage, right? And in the your in the your uncompensated case. So and generally, at light load condition because load is very less and at that time your uh, what you call that uh, if you uh, suppose if voltage uh, say uh, much higher than that suppose if it happens that voltage is more than your suppose your desirable voltage is 1.05 per unit say higher voltage and if you want to bring it down uh, and it is more than that say 1.050607 it has gone you bring it down then one way is for transmission line that one uh, that sun reactor so will bring it down to that voltage if you have a sun reactor if that situation arises like this and but in the case of uh, your distribution system nowadays that uh, and another thing you said uh, some limit uh, that what you call transmission line uh, and uh, heavily loaded or line loadability and another 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 thing is that that if you just if you increase the your what you call that your what you call the your uh, power that voltage will go down but remember one thing that uh, that is for the academic interest uh, but question is that 
that every every transmission line conductor has the thermal limit right that is the maximum current or maximum power carrying capability and if you if you consider that one also that this limit should not be violated for every branch naturally there you have to restrict that you cannot just go on increasing the load you have to uh, restrict that you are what you call the thermal limit of the uh, conductor that also you need to you have to you know, what you call you have to consider but just for the sake of academic interest if you go on increasing naturally voltage will fall and fall then another thing is um, uh, uh, this uh, 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 somebody is putting question that why does europe get the dc power and the us has to ac power let me tell you uh, something uh, before that that you are regarding your compensated line and uh, there are many places uh, because you are connecting distributed generation right in many places so because of that uh, uh, that voltage rise is an issue when you are putting that distributed generators on the distribution side sometimes voltage may go you are be above 1.05 per unit the limit is your 0.95 to 1.05 say so if it is more than 1.05 Right, so you have to mitigate the voltage rise because the limit is 1.05. So particularly in the distribution side, what they are putting it, they are allowing uh, your suppose wind generator is uh, wind generator turbine generator is there that wind generator turbine generators let it operate at the leading power factor. So that means when it operates at leading power factor means that it injects real power but it absorbs reactive power from the source. So when it is taking reactive power from the source, that means its current through each branch right will increase because that reactive current is increasing current is generally id plus j iq but say in general uh, iq may be negative or positive does not matter but iq actually is increasing so definitely current is increasing therefore voltage drop in each branch will increase hence the receiving end side voltage will go on decreasing so it will mitigate the voltage rise and the, nowadays that uh, dc microgrid is coming it is not Europe that DC, DC is coming up for some, for some application and slowly and slowly DC is also getting some importance. Uh, uh, several years back, uh, Tesla was in favor of AC and but uh, because at that time uh, uh, Tesla and Edison both uh, if I recall the history, Tesla and Edison both were together but Tesla was in favor of AC, right and Edison in those days maybe was in favor of DC. But let me tell you when Swami Vivekananda visited the United States, so he met Tesla. Whatever little bit I read about this that Swami Vivekananda visited Tesla's lab in consecutive 7 days and there was a very heart to heart talking between Tesla and Swami Vivekananda. This I have read somewhere, right. But Tesla actually came out from Edison and he was favoring your AC. Tesla used to dream wireless power used to dream that whole environment to be illuminated, right. So DC nowadays because of DC microgrid, uh, some applications of DC are there, DC is also coming up, but it is not overnight that already this system is existing more than 100 years, overnight you cannot just make it all uh, AC to DC, it is impossible, right. But DC is coming up, particularly DC microgrid research is coming, some small applications are also there. So DC is coming up, it is not Europe that it or this thing, but Europe is uh, many countries, they are more in favor of wind power generation, this is one thing. And second thing is that you are what you call that uh, many, uh, many they are uh, coming with that electric vehicles also. But uh, at the same time you have to see the population, right. We are huge population that also you have to consider, right. And uh, so, but in our country also slowly and slowly electric vehicles will also come, right. DC power also slowly and slowly will come, right. And because uh, all this uh, your what you call all this you have to take into consideration. But uh, one thing I have to tell that our electricity, our electricity system, that power system everything is very good actually. You have to think this country is a very big country, right. And you have to consider that our power system is very good. I yeah, will say our Indian power system is very good. Right, uh, uh, this is always I stress, right, and uh, at the, uh, this is one thing, and uh, your uh, um, uh, and you have to, you know, that the DC thing will uh, take time. DC distribution also people are talking of, but let me tell you one thing regarding whatever distribution AC distribution you are solving. If I give you a similar DC distribution network, 
the solving technique will be different, right? So these are the thing, and let me let me tell uh, how uh, uh, sir how the total uh, sir a traveling wave is formed due to surges. Then the ending point is lighting arrester is nearby substation. And every 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 uh, substation lightning arrester is there, and they take the intensity of the surges. What will the maximum intensity over the years? They study this, right? And uh, based on that, that uh, so the arrester was not taught here very little bit. I have touched according to design, but sometimes you will find I have seen in the substation that because of this lightning uh, your surges. That the arrester also got completely damaged. Maybe, maybe because uh, the surge strength was much more than what arrester rating had, right? Uh, actually, open wire was uh, that uh, neutral wire. Sorry for the incomplete question. Actually, the open wire was uh, neutral wire, right? As you are telling, neutral open wire is a neutral wire. I think if the neutral wire is open, you may not, uh, and you have touched it one side, you may not. Uh, uh, you have to see the what is the potential at the neutral wire, right? Uh, that was the thing, uh, and it is basically lying to neutral wire. So it is open. You have not got shocked it. I have not experienced it, so I cannot tell uh, your uh, exact answer of this. But I think even if it is open, actually you may not get shock in the neutral wire. But if it is a live wire, open conductor, you will get the shock because uh, you have to see the. Uh, neutral, uh, you are what you call that uh, neutral potential. It's a balance system. And then, uh, uh, if so, generally the lightning arrester used in substation is of nonlinear resistance. Uh, actually, whenever you see at the substation that there will be small cable will be there uh, before entering to the substation, or transformer is there, or this thing. Actually, uh, that cable is put because you are uh, what you call. Uh, that cable actually it helps uh, to reduce the strength of the surges. Lighting, I mean, if if something surges, uh, lighting surges happens, right? And this is one thing that they put a small length of cable, and uh, and uh, because the cable also has capacitance, and that's why the steepness also of the surge will decrease, right? So one is that it, it reduces the your uh, your what you call the peak value of the surges. And the steepest form that also because of that uh, cable is added, and cable has the capacitance, so that is why it will also or what you call reduce the steepness of that your what you call that your surges, right. So, that is why a small cable is put. So, and the substation arrestor is there, transformer is also there. So, before transformer, this thing the small length of cable they put because of this two reason, and then. This one I have to experience. So, whatever question you have put, I have not experienced this, you have to put this one. Uh, look, we uh, actually uh, I, this one also somebody is putting why ground wire is not used in uh, power distribution houses. Uh, this, uh, this question I, I uh, right now I have no answer that why ground wire is not used in distribution houses. I have to see this one, I have to see this one. It will be keep in my, I will keep it in, in my mind. If possible, I will put it in the forum. Let me see this one. I have right to not touch with uh, this thing. Uh, that is your why ground wire is not used in uh, distribution houses. But neutral wire is there, neutral wire is there. And uh, you are telling is not used in distribution houses, but our thing will be there, I think, in the houses. Uh, in our old houses, I have seen this one. Uh, this one, I have to see this. Uh, this question. Uh, put somebody samasri, right? Then somebody said, I should refer to know that the state estimation in power system. Samasri, this question I will put it why ground wire is whether it is used or not. But uh, in our old houses, house where uh, I have seen the ground wire, I will check it once, right? And uh, the state estimation is basically a PG course, right? And it uh, uh, and this uh, I have not taught you any time, right? And it is very, it is not, uh, you know, uh, as far as classroom is concerned, very small problem can be solved. And uh, in that case, <coughs> your what you call 
that you are, uh, but large scale, it is basically a PG course. Uh, uh, for PG power system course, I have taught this one, I, I have taught this one for few years, but here uh, the uh, any power system course, I cannot, uh, I cannot, uh, you are what you call, uh, uh, teach this course. It will be too heavy for the undergraduate student. For PG also, they cannot solve many things in the class, unless and until they write code, because a lot of complication is there for your static state estimation as well as dynamic both, right. And uh, any, uh, uh, these are, uh, these are the standard question and, uh, and any, anything else, just let me see here if anything is there or not, whatever one print out I got. Uh, Uh, somebody put some questions that uh, for hollow coil, now the forum it has been answered I think, for corona loss if it is a hollow conductor or square conductor how things will be. I think in the forum this has been, uh, that you are selling not houses, in need distribution towers. Uh, uh, distribution actually if you, uh, distribution uh, transformer if you see that they are basically star connected, right. If you see that uh, your 11 kV distribution transformer, uh, you are telling that sir, uh, not houses, but in the, the you know, this thing, you will find that uh, uh, the, your what you call that your uh, distribution transformer, they are basically primary secondary side, that 11 kV side, basically you star, star connected. So, the, that is why whatever transmission, whatever three phase distribution line you have seen, 11 kV, here also outside our campus also you will see there is no ground wire is provided. It is basically a, just a three phase a star or what you call, uh, it is a star connection. So, that is why not, but whenever you need that your uh, what you call line to new, your neutral voltage, right, a line to line voltage is there, then from 11 kV, uh, the assuming that uh, 11 kV some uh, small scale industry sometimes they need power at 11 kV. Otherwise, this 11 kV transformer again, it will be your step down to 11 kV by 440 volt transformer and it goes to the distribution line, right. So, generally, if you, if you see that your my power system analysis course, there are all sort of connection delta delta, delta star, star delta, star delta and where it is used, it has been explained everything in power system analysis course, right. So, another thing is that uh, 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 somebody is putting what are problems come into picture uh, when neutral is not uh, grounded. Uh, suppose, uh, suppose if neutral is not grounded, that false strategy of studied star star connection of this thing, many cases neutral are grounded. So, if neutral are grounded, you know what happens, if fault happens where that fault can be circulated close to the ground, right. So, generally you will find that neutral is your what you call. Uh, for for uh, different it depends on the different type of connection you will find the neutral is uh, grounded then uh, any 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 other uh, any other uh, thing but uh, 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 your uh, uh, so, so many questions from various uh, but I do not know you people from where you are, but from various uh, part of the country, right. And uh, um, I will I'll, I'll suggest that you are, uh, uh, so somebody put a radial distribution network can be solved, oh, somebody put a question in that Google sheet also, uh, I miss it, whether C, C++ or C sharp whatsoever. Right. Uh, my question is the packages are available nowadays, uh, but if you use any packages, then input you are giving something and output you are getting something in between, it is a black box. So, my suggestion is instead of using packages, if you write code of your own, that will be more interesting, right. You will get the flavor of it, right. But if you use packages, then input you are giving and output you are uh, getting. So, in that case what will happen, in between it is a black box. So, if you, if you, if you know, look, I, I uh, till uh, 10 years back, I used to write code of my own and that was in Fortin 95. But nowadays C, C++, C sharp is much better I have heard that C, first you have to learn C, then only C++ you can learn, 
so you can write code in c or c++ it doesn't matter right then you will get the flavor and it is easy to write the code right easy to write the code so uh, and what only only i have showed that they your what you call that your radial distribution network but whatever but it but another thing is there if distribution network is a loop or mesh distribution network same method can be applied whatever i have told with some modification that i have not taught to you it will be little bit your uh, little bit heavy for the undergraduate student but same methodology can be applied if it is a mesh distribution network but that i have not covered so i suggest that those uh, nowadays look nowadays you have to write code and uh, it is better rather than this thing then if you are good in coding then if you have a time you can write the code similarly for this one similarly for your load frequency control also simulink matlab simulink you can do it load frequency control part even the load flow distribution also maybe many packages are available in yeah, i mean even in matlab also you can find many packages are available right and if, even it is not whatever load flow technique i have told that is for is even couple newton raphson if you use that also will solve your network right but this technique which i have taught method 1 method 2 that is easier than couple newton raphson method and that is for balance system but technique which i have taught with some modification same technique can be applied to your unbalanced distribution network right that is also possible so and as mostly your uh, mostly your what you call that uh, nowadays things are changing and axis is our electric uh, electrical engineering is changing it is shifting to microgrid distributed generation and renewable sources right then dc microgrid ac microgrid ac dc microgrid so day by day things are becoming actually complicated right it is not easy it is not easy when you are thinking about microgrid things are not easy right so that's why uh, more core thinking particularly electrical engineering and all sort of your and power electronics also playing a big role in your what you call in your uh, microgrid side right because power without power electronics you cannot move so these are very i mean these are the topic which are you are getting more and more e importance nowadays right particularly the renewable power sources uh, and uh, anyway uh, renewable power sources that whenever we talk of we two things come in our mind one is solar another is wind of course next one biomass it is renewable but dispatchable because it is synchronous generator based right uh, but whereas uh, because uh, for biomass power can be controlled whereas solar and wind it depends on the nature right for solar it totally depends on the sun right and uh, and for uh, wind it depends on the wind velocity and totally climatic behavior right so these things are getting important in addition to that fuel cell is coming up right so battery is getting lot of importance nowadays lot of research is going on on batteries right uh, to be your what to call as a power source so all these things are coming up for the future right so that's why uh, my more interest is on distribution side as far as research is concerned and as well as the microgrid side right uh, this is you uh, have yeah you whatever you have seen at the substation i have also seen right this is actually copper strip or copper bar they use that it is sometimes how uh, you can see hollow also right basically that your what you call that um, uh, your they connect the all the three phase uh, line coming up and going out right and hollow conductor actually copper your corona loss will be less right i will i will show you i have I, I, during my course i told i will show some photograph of the corona just see whether you can see it or not this is actually that uh, how the corona being formed right this is one photograph this is turan goen and book and this is another form of corona like very high tension line it is it is laboratory test but this is how the corona is formed right this is very this is actually corona testing of conducted in laboratory environment right this is actually corona and this is how corona uh, happens and this book is a very good book i don't know whether it is available or not this is actually electric power transmission system engineering analysis and design by turan goenan this book is a really very good book right so this is actually i told you i'll show you some photograph and somebody said that sir as that uh, transmission line where is that shielding wire and this that if you look at the transmission tower you will find it is at the top right it is there uh, but that doesn't mean that lightning stroke will happen on the top of the tower it may directly sometime hit to the conductor right so this is what uh, corona 
uh, this thing and uh, regarding this uh, grounding part I have to go through a little bit right because I am, I, am, I, am, I am not in touch with the grounding part that earth grounding or your what you call the resistance grounding and after all we all are human being we cannot cannot recall all these things together but as you are asking this that this is your different uh, your resistance grounding and uh, your earthing resistance earthing system uh, so grounding has a sort it follows certain technique that what will be your uh, your uh, uh, resistive grounding or your earthing it follows certain some techniques are there so i am not familiar with this uh, with this topic but as you are telling i will ask my ts to put the answer of this first let me go through it because i am not in touch with uh, with, with uh, this grounding part so i, I this, this question i have right now i have no answer yeah, I, I am very i am by heart i am very clear if i know i will tell you yes i know if i uh, not if i don't know they are, then i have to tell you that i will read uh, this part I am not in touch uh, for several years. I am not at all in touch, but I'll go through it. I'll ask my peers to put this question, you know, this thing because it is uh, it is not related to this course also. So I am not in touch with this, right? Ultimately, after all, we are all human beings. We cannot answer everything at the same moment, right? But if, if you have, a, if you ask anything uh, regarding distribution system, DGs, or uh, your what you call microgrid. We can, I can try. I can try to answer all these things. Are uh, related to load frequency control, or related to your what you call that uh, capacitor application. I, I think somebody put some question. I do not know that regarding sun capacitor or something. But I told you uh, that uh, why sun capacitor is used. And but generally in distribution system, series capacitors are not used. Although I have taught series capacitor for distribution things, how things are. But uh, generally. Sun capacitors are used. Two or three sun capacitors you will find many places in the world. They use uh, sun capacitors in the distribution line, right? They use it. And any, 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 anything, anything else? I cannot see all of you, and but you can see uh, me or uh, this thing, right? But I always imagine that all of you are many of you are sitting in front of uh, this thing in front of me, right? Then, actually, uh, that uh, because of that uh, glazy thing, right? That uh, glaziness should be there from the point of view of portion in a glass, such that dust formation or dark formation on the insulator should not be there, right? Uh, that that then you will get a conducting path and easy leakage path. So that's why they use, uh, I mean, uh, your what you call glazy. Uh, part of that your upper portion of the insulator, right? Glazy or that's why porcelain or glass, not other other thing. And when they when they manufacture, they make all sort of your what you call all sort of test uh, before putting it. Even even uh, in railway traction line, you will see that your what you call uh, that uh, your uh, uh, sometimes you will find some kind of corona formation near the insulator, particularly rainy season. Although voltage level is low. But some kind of you will see that uh, some flashover will be there, right? Not uh, corona actually, flashover will be there, particularly the rainy season time. But even that also you will find it is a glazy one, right? It has to be porcelain or glass that is uh, recommended uh, from this point of view. And uh, your uh, and uh, that traveling wave is not happening every time, and uh, that happens actually particularly when uh, lightning surges come, right? And uh, as much I and whatever lightning. Uh, surges little bit whatever covered. I have covered from this book only, uh, from Turan uh, Turan Goinan book. I think I don't know right now whether I will find out from where it is, right? But uh, from this book only, I have uh, covered your this diagram. I have taken from this book only. This is there in lightning arrester. This one also uh, have been shown, right? And uh, your what you call, and uh, this is your another your what you call the bundle conductors under corona, right? This is something lightning impulse flash over test. There are real one, but flash over test, right? This is also of this book. So this is another one. This is another one, right? This bundle conductor exposed to man-made lightning. This is the man-made lightning, right? So this uh, from this book only, and these are the diagram. Whatever I have shown, this is I have taken from this book. This book has actually everything and written in very nice fashion. So that's why this book I have followed. That is your electric power transmission system engineering. 
right so so these are the um, your what you call uh, what you call this but it is not a regular phenomena but when it comes it comes heavily right you have to protect everything without protection uh, nothing can be nothing can be done and i will suggest uh, i will suggest many of you uh, many of you have uh, your what you call uh, uh, taken this mm. uh, uh, practical important dialectic does it has any relation with uh, uh, relative uh, permittivity uh, uh, actually in reality in re that whatever has been shown that is theory right and uh, that is theory in reality i have told you it is not used right different type of dialectic is not used in reality but as far as theory uh, that is that is shown that this way it can be done but in reality it is not there uh, really and let me tell you one thing uh, underground cable up to for, for example in our campus also underground cable 11 kb cable is there but mostly it is overhead distribution uh, power distribution system in many countries in our countries also uh, because uh, uh, that uh, overhead cable actually is cable is actually very expensive right cable is expensive and uh, uh, this is one point another, another, uh, another, another thing is for high tension line uh, for cable uh, it will be too expensive and uh, that's why for uh, your what you call up to 11 kb it is okay and uh, your but uh, uh, another point is cable if fault is there you locate the fault then fault hearing uh, fault uh, uh, detection and the repairing and cable jointing of the, all these things it takes time it takes time right so whatever you are uh, this thing uh, so uh, does it have any relation with relative uh, permittivity that's i told you that uh, we saw in the theory right and but in reality uh, you are we just uh, suppose you have three phase line three conductors and among them the insulations are there and uh, then uh, then after that uh, so many so many layers are there right and somebody says uh, sir please explain the about concentric solar power generation in uh, uh, next session uh, the uh, q lecture will be there next thing so actually solar power is not the your <laughs> what you call is not the uh, syllabus of this course that will be completely renewable power generation course right so the renewable power generation i have taught here in our pg course we have renewable power generation i have taught here but for this course i cannot <laughs> cannot teach that right because it is not related to this course in future if we at present not in future if i take renewable power generation course at that time i'll try but question is that that uh, i have to see the audience first that that solar power renewable power generation so in that case i have to cover everything in detail and it will take time so please don't ask me that in next next uh, next week next thursday q triple will be there there i'll uh, try to tell something whatever has been given in the video lecture right but question is that please don't ask me to teach that whatever you want right this is not beyond this thing otherwise i have taught renewable power generation for pg not for it uh, and you many ug students also used to take the course this is common for ug and pg uh, both ug and pg right that Uh, this is this is this is a very very interesting question this is uh, uh, i will tell you once i was listening a very good lecture somebody uh, i mean who is the pioneer of your what you call that your uh, your pmu and other things uh, several years back i was listening his lecture so for example relay he was taking this is hidden this is what you are telling it is a hidden fault right suppose some relay before putting it or commissioning it in the power plant you tested everything relay is fine suppose thousand different relays you have tested out of which one is suppose faulty but you do not know but you have installed it how to detect it i have no i have no answer to this so whatever your question is sir everything is done after that that means it is hidden fault so uh, there is no answer and and I, I i don't know whether any practical engineer can answer this or not i have some doubt right because you have tested everything as long as you are testing suppose thousand same thing suppose thousand ceiling fan you have tested right and you find everything out of one it has become defective 
but uh, but you do not know when all thousands are used you find one is not moving one has become defect but you do not know this is hidden fault i have no answer i don't know whether any practical engineer can have answered this or not but this is a very good question so that's why i am talking about hidden fault of relay right this also he told that this is the hidden fault but i have listened his answer your course your presentation uh, fantastic presentation presentation very nicely but uh, i i didn't find any answer for this is called hidden fault i have also i have also no answer suppose some patient is checked for some disease doctor makes a all medical test nothing is found and immediately after that or after one or two days whether some disease has caught or not you do not know so these are hidden thing and uh, i don't know whether uh, i have no answer i don't know whether practical engineers can have answer or not i have no ideas right so whatever you question you are asking that is a that it shows that you are intelligent <laughs> this much i have to tell right so now something is multiplication of 11 to 220 kb there is no reason uh, there is no reason different country has different thing 11 in our country in, um, several years back i have seen in himachal pradesh 22 kb is 22 kb cable is there 15 kb cable is there but 11 33 66 132 220 20, all are multiplication of 11 there is as such no reason some vague reason people give right but that vague reason i don't want to tell here even this morning i have asked my ts have you seen any such reason maybe he is listening now but let me tell you he said that <laughs> this this is the reason i said this is a vague reason so i will not tell you so there is no such reason yeah, usa and canada has different voltage level Uh, Europe also 11 kb is there, maybe other voltage level is there, but the multiplication. But after 220 kb, it is 400 kb. It is not multiplication of 11. After that 765, after that 1200 kb line also there. Those are not multiplication of 11. So this study, sorry, this uh, your uh, this standard is coming over the years, right? So you just overnight you cannot change the standard. So it is moving, it is going on. So there is no reason. But vague reason. If you ask me in front. rather than this uh, uh, your video listening then i can tell you the answer if anybody <laughs> in the forum also i i have asked my students not to give such answers right but some vague answer is there many people tell like this but that is not correct right so this is one thing uh uh synchronous motor and uh, synchronous generator now does the synchronous motor is uh, not used for that but synchronous generator means it is at the power station because it is a synchronous generator so it operates at generally 0.85 power factor right so generally it it it, it generally it, what you call it needs excitation so it has to generate reactive power uh, so that reactive power is not sufficient sometimes to your what you call to supply the reactive power part of the load right so that's why fax devices are used but forget about fax devices Let's say simple sun capacitors are used. So because of this sun capacitor, it also compensates your what you call the reactive part of the load. Details, details, mathematics, numerical, everything has been covered in this course. And this is now only up to the your seventh uh, assignment is going on. You will find probably you will find it in the eighth assignment, the lecture thirty six to forty or after that. All derivation, everything has been given. and that is also that 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 basic flavor has been taken from the another book of electric power distribution system by the same author turan goenan by the same author turan goenan that book is electric power distribution system right so everything has been explained there so you just go through it and uh, or everything has been done but uh, regarding reactive power so this is the thing so that's why that uh, every substation if you go you will find that uh, most of the cases sun capacitors are connected they follow certain thumb rule what thumb rule as video lecture live i will not tell you but if you come to me because before coming to teaching i was working uh, somewhere in delhi for 3 years so at that time we had a lot of uh, your distribution project so from there i developed the interest on the distribution side right although my phd topic was not distribution side it is different topic but from there i picked up the your what you call the interest in the distribution side and i took it whole heartedly and i st i stayed in that organization for 3 years after that i joined in teaching so there i have learned uh, many things in 3 years of what uh, in those days nowadays things have changed right 
So you will find we used to put some thumb rule regarding putting a sound capacitors, right? But one thing is there, you in the lecture you will see that suppose some sound capacitor rating, say for example, 5 me 1 mega bar you have connected, that is at the rated voltage, that is at the rated voltage. Its rating varies because I uh, will put a question to you. That answer I will give two answers, one answer I will not give, that is up to you. That how many types of generally loads are there, uh, different type of loads. One you say constant power type of load. I am putting constant still 15 minutes are there, constant power type of load. You, many of you are writing here, can you write the answer of that example of constant power type of load, then I will appreciate that. Then another one is the constant impedance load, right. Can you give an example of constant impedance load? If you write the answer here, I will tell you. Another you give say constant current load, right. Another, th another thing is mix of all these things, right. It is a called composite load, right. So, different type of your loads are there. So, let me tell you one thing, this uh, your sun capacitor actually, when you put like that, uh, I, to, I am giving the, this example to you, it is basically constant impedance load, because frequency generally fixed as 50 hertz, right. So, reactance almost constant you can assume, right. And reactive power a Q C is equal to V square upon X C, right. So, if X, assuming it is an ideal capacitor and R is neglected. So, in that case, if you, if you, this proof, uh, this Q C is equal to V square X C and constant impedance load, it is, uh, if I recall correctly, it has been explained in your course, this course, later it will come, right. So, it is a basically constant impedance, that means Q C actually proportional to the, your V square, X C is constant, assuming frequency is constant, right. So, if, and if suppose 1 megawatt capacitor is given mean, it is, suppose it is connected at, say, 11 kV voltage, for example, say. Right, 11 k means you say 1 per unit. That means Q C is proportional to V square. That means your, that means you can write Q C is equal to Q C 0 into V square. I mean it is something like this. Because all I do not write on this thing, right. So, that is Q C actually, if you like like this reactive power is equal to V square upon X C. This X C, that is 1 upon omega C, right. Basically it, it is your, your what you call omega C V square but omega is 2 pi f, assuming frequency is constant, so naturally this, this uh, your x c is constant, that means q c actually proportional to v square, right. So, generally suppose anything q c can be written as q c 0 into v square, right. So, the, suppose this is the thing, q c 0, if it is 1 mega bar, say 1, and it depends on v is per unit, if voltage is v is equal to 1.0, say it is 11 kV, 1 per unit is equal to 11 kV, right, then it will inject 1 mega bar. Uh, but question is that if voltage is less, suppose it is 0 0.95, it will be 1 into 0.95 square, right. So, it will be less than the specified rating. So, if voltage and uh, generally you will find most of the voltages are less than the rated voltage. So, it will inject your what you call that your less reactive power. That means, whenever somebody is uh, doing research or this thing, if they need to consider this capacitor as a constant impedance load, right. But if it is more than that, if it is 1.0 to say, then it will be your 1.0 to square. So, it will inject more than the rated one, right. So, that is why uh, that uh, load, that another thing is the constant power load, whatever load flow studies has been covered in this course, the loads are treated as a constant power, right. But if it is a, if except constant power, if you treat the load as a composite load, then what will happen? That load depends on the voltage magnitude. Uh, if it is if you treat as a constant current or constant power, uh, or constant impedance or a composite of this, that means load actually is function of the voltage magnitude. That in that case what will happen, the load part is not a constant. Every iteration you have to evaluate the load, that means load, all the node load will be put in the iteration. Every voltage, every iteration voltage is changing, accordingly load will change. So, I put a question to you that if uh, give an example of constant power load, and give one example, constant current I will not tell you, I will not tell you. I will give you think, some thinking and put in the forum that answer, otherwise I will ask my TS to give the answer and constant impedance I told you that you are what you call the capacitor, right. Uh, can you give another example of roughly, uh, it will it will also match another example of constant impedance load. If you write here, then I will know the answer, uh, right, but nobody has put the answer on this one. What is the, give one, uh, every day, every day you handle that uh, in your lab, uh, those equipment. 
So, what is the example of a constant power load means the load actually tries to draw the constant power from the source right constant current means the load tries to draw constant current from the source and constant mean, impedance means whatever may be the voltage and current it will try to maintain that you are what you call the constant impedance of this. So, it is there in your lab every day you are teaching you know you, you are handling you know the name of those equipments, but only thing is that perhaps you do not know that this this is the example of your constant your what you call uh, your uh, your yes somebody has written Ganga Prasad Jadav uh, your constant impedance uh, he has given one example yes it is correct but little bit it varies with temperature your answer is correct that is constant impedance right uh, and any like resistance and what about constant power. And somebody has written that what is the importance of surge impedance loading. I think uh, this question has been answered in that your what you call in the forum. Whatever questions you are putting, uh, and why surge impedance of cable is less as compared to overhead line, that is also explained in the cable thing, whatever, whatever I have taught, and whatever the importance of surge impedance loading in power system, these are all covered, right. If you want, I will ask my TS to put today itself those answers again, right. But these are these are all. If you listen those, uh, your what you call those lectures, all are uh, all all have been answered. And but what is the example of constant power? Uh, are you are handling. <coughs> you are give uh, give one example. Uh, uh, that is that is constant impedance. Uh, some so with zero zero seven is putting. That is your constant. Uh, constant impedance right, uh, but you are telling that sir this can be as a constant uh, power load uh, this whatever whatever writing here. Uh, more or less uh, this one also I can accept to some extent, uh, but one specific example one machine <coughs> rotating machine I am giving you a hint rotating machine right. Uh, so, whatever load flow studies you have considered this thing, but surge impedance cable and uh, this thing and surge impedance loading in power system both have been uh, your covered in your cable thing right. And I did not bring those notes also with me any any anything else. Uh, here maximum question comes from uh, uh, Hitesh, one Hitesh is there, then uh, uh, I think Samastri may be the next, <coughs> right. Yes, yes, you are right, Sovik you are right, <laughs> right, your answer is correct. This, this answer others also can see, no, uh, whatever is there writing here, yes. they can see, no, yes, yes, so yes, yes, your, your answer is correct, uh, thank you that uh, this thing. But constant current you gave, right? Other uh, think little bit on the power electronic side, and uh, this answer I will not give for one day. And you think and give one example of uh, constant or uh, current load, right? And anything else? If you if you if you have any 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 anything. But uh, just uh, circuit mentioning will not help. You have to you have to give something. You know this thing. So we said he was guessing. Uh, some of typographical error is there in guessing spelling, right? Yes, Ganga Prasad also answered correctly. Yes. Any, any anything else? And uh, uh, if you have anything. But among, <coughs> let me tell you uh, very frankly, among all the chapters covers in the covered in this course, uh, only that traveling wave part, that transient over voltage, will be slightly difficult one. But uh, for the easy analysis, uh, what I have done is I have uh, neglected the resistance and 
all the traveling wave part also uh, from this book, I think most of these things have been covered from this Tutulan Guainan book, the traveling wave part, right. This is the only little bit, uh, that's why your assignment average had gone down for that, for that thing, right. Uh, average has gone down, but other things are okay. All, all other assignments, whatever average score I can see, all of you are doing well. Uh, but traveling uh, uh, this thing, uh, traveling web card, it has slightly gone down uh, because it is slightly difficult topic. Then, uh, so uh, somebody, uh, no, if you say <coughs> that you are a synchronous motor, you have to give the mathematical thing. Uh, that uh, you have to give an uh, this thing. Uh, mathematically, you have to prove that uh, that it is uh, making constant power, right? Uh, although that induction motor also I said that, but you have to prove it. Uh, that some proof is required. That yes, it draws. Any anything else? Uh, 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 anything uh, anything uh, you want? And. Uh, uh, they are telling 5 minutes, uh, 5 minutes left. Only one thing I did not answer, I have to read it because I am not in touch, that is your summer question, the grounding and grounding uh, or grounding, uh, that grounding resistance etcetera, that is not related to this course, but uh, uh, I will try to put it in forum, you will find the answer will be in forum. Or if you have a mail, you can send me mail, uh, I will send it in detail. Uh, no, just uh, just saying uh, uh, you this thing uh, Zener diode or your diode circuit will not help. Uh, you have to explain it. But here explanation is not possible. But you have to uh, explain it. It is not like that. It is uh, not exactly like that, right? Uh, just if some name <laughs> name comes and uh, those things. Uh, anything else? So, uh, hope that your what you call uh, that uh, from various part of India you have uh, um, some of you have answered. Hope uh, I believe uh, some of you have uh, listened to this and uh, before leaving I have to tell you once again that uh, those uh, who will write the exam for this course I uh, hope for the best, uh, I pray for the best to all of you do well right and uh, take it seriously and uh, just uh, uh, just uh, read all the lecture notes very carefully and uh, when many things are asked sir why don't you give the your uh, power your lecture notes uh, once i thought but later i found that uh, there are so many pages uh, for this handwritten thing and uh, scanning and sub giving it to you it will take a long time right and uh, that is why uh, after taking few pages uh, your scanning, I have decided at least not, uh, but you listen carefully and uh, things will be all right for you, right. So, that is why so I am extremely sorry that everything was for handwriting and uh, that also perhaps you know how much labor somebody has to give in when it is handwriting and uh, that is why I could not make it in that your scan copy to you. But uh, you just please go through it and listen carefully and all the video lecturing down you need not go through YouTube, they have, you have the link you can easily listen, right. And everything I have seen that it is readable and visible and absolutely there is no problem and just try to try to do well. This is my suggestion to, uh, Hitesh has given so many example, computer, then somebody going to motor, right, so many things are given, right. So, thank you very much for this. So, I have to now, I have to say to all of you to goodbye, but next week, uh, I think again during the same time perhaps, those who will listen to QTP lecture, they are also for another 2 hours. That time, I will, uh, I am telling you in advance, those who will listen QTP lecture, mostly I will uh, try to cover there on the part of the distribution or what you call, one hour I will spend for distribution thing, another hour I will try to spend on load frequency control. Right. So, with that I have to say goodbye and thank you to all of you.